this is my third video on turning this little travel Bible into my prayer Bible war binder. And the first one, I showed these three columns of tabs and they're about taking prayer requests and then how you can take those prayer requests and see the desire or the need for that person or for yourself and use these tabs to pray over them. And these are the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, etc and also some of the issues that come up like anger, impatience, you know, all of those. So those are all found here. So that was the first video. And then in the next video, we took a prayer walk through this Bible. And so at each stop along the way, you can say a prayer or during it, it can move you to prayer, or you can just see it as taking you through the great controversy to the end and the promises that we have in Jesus. And for me, just fully understanding that there is a battle can deepen my prayer life as far as knowing that it does matter. So those were the first two videos. And in this third one, I want to show you this last set and this one introduce you to this and I'll show you why I use these. So there are many models of prayer. I've heard of some where it's a five finger prayer and I've tried many and I've ended up really liking this one because I know that the sanctuary has meaning in today's life and it's not the same as it was then because we're not bringing a literal lamb to be slaughtered and all of that kind of stuff. But each item in the sanctuary had meaning and it's neat to see how it all connects. So I like thinking of this as I go through my prayer life. And so what we have in the sanctuary, there's this courtyard, but even to get into that, there's a gate that we enter through and we know Jesus is that gate. So as we enter into this gate, that's Jesus, we enter in with thanksgiving. And so this can lead us to think who is God and who is Jesus and am I thankful? So these are these red tabs and then at the bottom, these red tabs here are focusing in on God. And also I wanna mention that I have these purple tabs up here which are about faith, everything connected to the spiritual life. So God and Jesus and all those kinds of things I put in there. But these red tabs really point out that part. So I'll go ahead and show those verses today, but I'm gonna go ahead and show the rest of this just so you have it in case you're curious. I think I got this off of somebody had listened to a message and they had taken notes. And so I just used their notes to create this. The first thing you do is you enter in through the gate with thanksgiving, recognizing who is God and who is Jesus. And then we come to the altar of sacrifice. And so that's where we want to confess our sins to Jesus. And then the laver is all about cleansing. It also symbolizes baptism. And so we're going to ask God to cleanse us through the power of his word. And this is both Jesus, the word made flesh, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit, and we accept this forgiveness that he offers us. And so as we go into the holy place, we come to the seven branch candlestick. And so we can ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And then across is the table of showbread. We can ask God to supply our need. And then the altar of incense, we can ask for Christ's righteous prayers to cover our own, making them acceptable to God. And then once we're covered by Christ's righteousness, we can intercede for others and that you can think of these tabs. So these tabs can go into all of this. And one thing about this ministry to know is that it happens simultaneously. So we can move through this at similar times. And then as you go through the veil, you're in the most holy place. And this is the Ark of the Covenant. And here we can reflect on all he's done for us and give praise. So that's one model of prayer. And that was notes off of a sermon. And another way that I often think of it as you come in with thanksgiving, you confess your sins to God and ask for forgiveness. You remind yourself of who you are in Jesus. And then I've heard of this furniture in this way. This is one that I created and it's really messy. It's in my original study Bible. I want to create something like it. And so what happens is you enter in through the gate and here's the altar of sacrifice. This is where the lamb was slain and Christ fulfilled this by sacrificing himself. So as we enter in through the gate and the altar of sacrifice, we can reflect on who God is and how much he's done for us. And then as we come to the altar of sacrifice and the brass laver, we're giving Christ all of our sins. We're laying those, any sins, we can ask him to bring them to our attention and we can confess all of those sins, get them into his blood, and then we can thank God for his cleansing. And then as we move into the holy place, we come to the table of showbread, and we can think of this as our spiritual needs, asking God to fill us with his word. 
kind of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And we can move over to the golden candlestick and ask God to help us to be an evangelist and to spread his light to the world. And we can move to the altar of incense and that's when we can pray for others. And then as we get into the most holy place, we see the Ark of the Covenant. And this is where the Shekinah glory would be. This is where God is. And this is where we can thank God again for all that he's done in this moment. What he's done to cleanse you for your sins. And ask him to put his laws into our hearts and minds. So that we're not trying to do things in a legalistic way. But they're written in our hearts and minds. Ask God to seal it in our hearts and minds harder than flint so that we don't even think of walking a way that's different than what God would want us to do. So as we move through God's sanctuary, we're coming closer and closer to who God is. So that's just another way to think of it. So I do want to print something up with this with text boxes and make a neater version of it. And of course, you can pray in any way that you want and it's just whatever works for you. And so that's kind of how all these different parts of the Bible work. And so today I'm going to show you these red tabs. These are the actual names of God. I won't go through all of them because I know I can just post the list and you can go through those on your own. And what I did is I have a tab here. I have chapter 1 verse 1 and then here it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then I wrote down the word for that. And then here in Jeremiah 23 verse 6 it says, The Lord our righteousness. So the term for that is Jehovah Sikinu. And the other place that you see it is in Jeremiah 33 verse 16. So I wrote that as another spot. But I only put a tab on this one because I didn't want it to be too overwhelming if I'm deciding to go through the names of God. So that's all for that end. So I just keep looking and adding more. So that's the first part of wanting to focus in on who God is. And then the next part down here is anything that talks about the character of God. And you might want different ones or the same ones, but this first one is marked at Exodus 34 verses 5 through 7. And it's when the Lord passes before Moses and he proclaims the name of the Lord, which you often find is the character of God, like the Lord is my banner, that kind of thing. And in this case, he talks about being merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. So in this, we see that there is going to be justice. And in this one, Numbers 14 verse 18, and it says, the Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. And then my next one, and I just circled it, Psalm 8. So if you want to look at that, it's all about the greatness of God. And actually a lot of the Psalms are like that. So I will probably be adding quite a few more. So this next one is Psalm 145. And these are the verses that I found that had pictures. So I just put them all together. And as we go through it, you're going to notice that some of them are missing. Like here we have verse 4. And then the next one I found was verse 8. And then from 9, we go to 14. And then from 14, it goes to 17. This one is 18 and 19. And then it skips to verse 21. So I apparently couldn't find verse 20. Some of the verses were missing. But I thought this was neat because each one has a flower. So it kind of went together. Not really. The other thing you'll notice is that it has a horrible quality to the print. I had purchased a very cheap printer from Walmart and within a few months it just stopped working and I would try and do fixes on it that I found online and just it just didn't ever get fixed. But it was a while before I bought a new printer and so I just kind of made do as I went and it just got worse and worse. But so that's just a note on the picture quality. I know it's not that great. And one other thing I want to mention is Psalm 145. If I do want to read the whole thing, in context. I just flip the page and it's right in the next page. So here are these verses. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. 
My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. So then the 147 verse 5, And it's great is our Lord, and of great power his understanding is infinite. So I loved that. But if you notice, I've circled some other ones. So then at the beginning of a prayer time, I can just be going through some of these Psalms and reading them back to God and reminding myself about God's greatness. So this is a picture I found online of Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. So that's the picture. And then these are the verses about us not glorying in ourselves, but in glorying in God. And then here I've written chapter 12, verse 32 of Luke. And it says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So on this next one, I've written John chapter 6 through 15. I could put a tab into each of these spots, but I haven't. But these are the seven I am statements of Jesus. These are more characteristics of God. And just in case you're not familiar with them, I'll go ahead and read it. So this is, I am the bread of life. And Jesus says that in John chapter 6, verses 35 and 48. I am the light of the world. And that's in chapter 8, verse 12 and chapter 9, verse 5. I am the gate. That's chapter 10, verse 7. I am the good shepherd. Chapter 10, verse 11 and 14. I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 11, verse 25. I am the way, the truth and the life. Chapter 14, verse 6. And I am the true vine chapter 15 verses 1 and 5. I found this sheet just by putting it into the search engine and there's a bunch of different images that you can find online. Some of them are more square and so this one because it was a bookmark shape fit in my Bible a little bit better. I just stretched it out a little bit to fit my Bible. So at this point the last one that I've added to my Bible is Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 20. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So those are those red tabs. And so as I'm reading through them, I can turn those into a prayer. Or another thing is just being familiar with those. You can say, thank you, Lord, that you're my banner, one of those names of God. Or you can say, thank you that you hide us in the shadow of your wings or you're our healer. Thank you that you are the bread of life and that you're the gate, that you're the good shepherd, that you say that your sheep know your voice and will follow you. All those kinds of things can be added to these tabs. And so as you read them, you can be praising God back for who he is as you enter into that gate and you come to the altar of burnt offering. Mm -hmm.